Thank you very much, Mistress of Ceremonies. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know you will find the crowd pretty small. It's, it's not because the people of Cassius East did not want to be here, but because we follow in the science. And the science means that you only have a certain number of people in any public gathering. But I can assure you, um, on a normal occasion, the streets would be filled and we'd have a, a, a big screen on the Marsha ground. Let me recognize the Excellency, the Acting Governor General, Errol Charles, the Senior Minister, the Honorable Stevenson King, the Honorable Claudius Francis, Speaker of the House, the Honorable Attorney General, Leslie Mondesi, Ms. Elena Lansico, the granddaughter of the late Romanus Lansico, Father Raj, other invited guests, the President of the Sinusha Turn Tourism Association, the other invited, invited guests, constituents, members of the Marshall Women's League, good afternoon. When I stated a few months ago that if re-elected into government, we would have renamed the NGBO Human Resource Development Center after Romanus, everybody thought that a politician was bluffing as usual. And no one took us seriously. In fact, no one took me seriously. There was, there was the usual... Um, Jib, jabs, etc., on social media and on political platforms. But I knew what I knew that if given the opportunity, I would have fulfilled that promise. Because I also knew that Romanus would have been happy to know that the parliamentary representative for Castries East was the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I am sure of that. <clears throat> I've been in the politics for quite a long time. I think Steve and I probably the longest in the room. And I forgot Claudius Francis joined the party when he was 13 years old. He had to get permission from his parents. And, of, of, um, and Your Excellency, I'm sorry, you were born of the party. Um, so, I've been in politics for quite a long, a long while, and I can tell you the politics has changed. I remember vividly one day, Claudius, Riquid, and I were outside Constitution Park. And that was a time when we went out there and we used to behave bad. <laughs> we used to, not, we, we were not very nice to parliamentarians when they came in. Steve, used, Steve was in there, Romanus was in there. And in the, in the hustle and the hustle and the things, Romanus said to somebody, bring three t-shirts, one for Rick, one for Claudius, and one for, for Philip. And I remember Rick saying, what's wrong with that guy? We are there hustling him, and he's saying t-shirts for us. That was, it was around the tourists, it was around jazz, Claudius? It was around jazz, and he sent, he said he had some stuff for us, and he gave us three t-shirts and some of the things that they used to give for the jazz festival. And, the, and that was the time when we were outside booing him, eh? We were outside booing him. That, that was how different the politics was. It wasn't the politics of vengeance. It wasn't the politics of victimization. It wasn't the politics of hatred. It was a politics where you were very strong, you were strident in your, in your, in your opinions, but you really did not get involved in what's happening now in the politics. Those were the better days of the politics. And I think the majority of St. Lucian people want to get back to these days. I think the majority of people want us to be able to argue, to argue intensely, to argue deeply. But in the final analysis, let us remain as human beings and have one thing in mind, 
the upliftment of the country for the people of St. Lucia. And that was where Romana stood. There are some classics about Romanus which I, if you allow me to recall, I will recall. Romanus liked to talk. He would talk, and if you have a mic, you talk more. One day, Romanus went to a funeral, and at the funeral, he asked to give a speech. So the parliamentary rep got up to speak. So Romanus began to see how he knew the gentleman very well. The gentleman helped him in his self-help program because Romanus is always a self-help fellow. Self-help, self-help. He, he believed in the Kudme situation. So Romanus is giving a big speech. And out of the mouth of a babe, a child says, Mr. Lanzico, a lady that died with? <laughs> and as if <laughs> nothing happened, Romanus just continued. And I know him very well, I think so, and he did hear that. <laughs> so when the, the discussions, the, the Romanus finished his speech, and they started to share the, 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 the drinks, Romanus, somebody said to Romanus, Lancy, you don't know it's not a man that died? He said, it don't matter, man or woman, somebody died. <laughs> and it continued, and that was the, the nature of the project at that time. Um, there was a guy called Peter Josie, who was also involved in the politics at the time. If you hear him now, you will not know he's the same person. Anyway, that's for another show. Um, Peter Josie was also involved in the politics of Castries East. One day, there was a public meeting at the top of at the top of Maynard Hill. There is a hole in there. If you go down all these spaces now, you will not know what it looked like before. So Romanus was holding a meeting there. And Josie came with, a, with, with his crowd. And then Romanus is saying, where may see? Not Romanus. Josie is saying, where may see? Romanus, and two sala, what you on meeting? And Romanus very boldly says, I will go where the votes are. And that's where they are, that's where I am. So Josie just left him, and he had his meeting. <laughs> And there's a lot of, of these incidents with Romanus that showed how the politics has really, really changed. So what we're doing today is to herald a new beginning in the politics of St. Lucia. The politics of victimization and the politics of vindictiveness, vindictiveness the politics of I will make you cry. We have to stop. We have to put a halt to that level and that degree of politics. And as Prime Minister of St. Lucia, I will not condone that type of politics. And I know it's very difficult for a people who have been, who've suffered, a people who have been treated badly by one government, a people who have been ostracized, a people who because of their perception of who they support, have been kept without employment, have been, contracts have been taken away from them, their jobs have been taken because it's perceived that they support another party. It's very difficult to tell them, listen to me, we are all St. Lucians and we have to live in St. Lucia. But I think somebody must start it. And the renaming of this, of this center the remaining of this center is just a small step in the transformation of the politics of St. Lucia. I hope it transforms the politics of St. Lucia. And the very presence in the cabinet of Stevenson King and Richard Fredericks is also a signal to the change of the politics in St. Lucia, where people can come together in a cabinet for the benefit of the country and the benefit of the people of St. Lucia. Romanus was a politician, where Romanus basically 
liked people, he liked St. Lucia, and he liked community service. Romanus was a JC, he was a Rotary member, he was in the Mental Health Association, he was even the president of a women's league. He, <laughs> yes, he was, after the president of women's group. Romanus was the pioneer of the mothers and fathers group. He, I mean, that was really part of his thing. And then when we were in opposition, I gave him some stick on, on that. I did. Um, <laughs> I did. I'm not sorry I did, because we did it together. Ain't no problem with that. He gave me some stick also. But that, that was the general nature of, of, of the politics. But what was striking is that I felt that I could have gone to Romanus or to Steve and said, listen to me, there is something I need, and they would do it. And that's the difference in, in, in the politics. I felt I could have gone as opposition, as strident in the opposition. I could have spoken to Romanus and said to him, listen to me, this must happen, and he would do it. Even though the same night we'd have been at each other on, 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 on the platform. But not personal. It was never personal. It was about people. It was about who had the better plan for the country and who thought they had the, the, the better plan for, for the country. Romanus liked to be in the public domain. Romanus was what we know now about social media and public relations. I think Romanus was the king. He knew that before all of us. The benefit of social media although his social media was a mic and a television. But he knew, he understood the value of public relations. He understood the value of making what you did in the constituency, making it known by the people of the constituency. So if Roman has opened a standpipe, the TV is there. Anything he did, he thought without social media, he thought that the people should know about it and the people should get to understand that it would benefit them in one way or the other. So he understood public relations. But he also understood the value of big projects. Some people would think that Romanus was best known for wanting to do little projects that are extremely important. The footpaths that some of us sometimes thought were not important. And up to now, some of, us, some of us think that they are not important because we do not feel it. Romanus felt the need for little things like footpaths and drains and water and the electricity pole. He understood that and he ensured that these things happen. But he also understood the bigger picture and promoted the bigger picture. Romanus' dream was to have a new hospital. That new hospital dream was, even it, it caused some conflict between him and his party. He wanted to, he thought St. Lucia needed a new hospital. And he began himself to build a new hospital. He raised funds for the new hospital. He walked, he talked, he had raffles. He did, and he, I think, collected a million dollars towards a new hospital. And he must, he'll always be remembered for that in the history of St. Lucia. <clears throat> Talking about the big projects, there was, a, there was need, there was some tournament happening in St. Lucia and the VG multipurpose, it was supposed to be held at the VG multipurpose court. They needed, it's a netball tournament, right Steve? It's a netball tournament. And it ought to be held, the St. Lucia had no venue for the VG multi, multi a multi-purpose court for, for that tournament. And remember Rick saying to Romanus, you, 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 uh, you're mad. You know Rick always calls people mad. You, that, that's, that's not possible. And he, with self-help, with begging, with cajoling, with pushing, he ensured that that multi-purpose 
court at Vigi went up and the tournament was held in St. Lucia. He also th thought big for this building. And this building has a very interesting history. It was supposed to be in several locations. He thought that there was need for a center where people could gather and have the activities. And he decided to begin it himself. And he started a fundraising with the Marshall Women's League, with a lady called Philipsia Joseph, I think is her name, and some other ladies. And then Romanus, his, his people, his supporters, were strident. They didn't treat me well. They were very rough on me. They thought I was rude to want to contest against Romanus in the election. But Romanus never took that line. And then when he started to collect money, there, there was a raffle. And the raffle, I think, is a Suzuki vehicle at that time. And he raised, I think, $100,000 for the construction of that center to the help of the Martian Women's League. Again, he could not have got the center built. But in 1997, when I replaced him as parliamentary representative, I, from that time I knew I was going to have that center built because it was a project for the people of St. Lucia. These were not the days when you stopped any project because it was not conceived by you. I went to the cabinet and Kenny Anthony, the then prime minister and the leader of, of, the, of the government agreed with me that we should continue it. We approached the European Development Fund. There was a, there, there was a, a social pro program, I think it's an EDF something. There was a, a social program and they gave us the funding to build that center. But because of the location, there's a massive wall. There, there's need to build a massive wall out there because we had to get the space to put it in, to have some parking, etc. So we had to um, excavate to get that wall done. And that wall was costing a lot of money at the time. I think it's something like $300,000 at the time, 19, in the year 1999, 2000. So it was my job to convince the cabinet that to put $300,000 on a wall, when guys in the cabinet themselves said they wanted many things to happen. But the Prime Minister thought we should happen. We argued our way through, and we built a wall, and then we got the center. And that is where the center is. But I knew that that center would not be used for political purposes. I said that we should hold no constituency group meeting, no political activity. It had to be something for the people of all political colors to use and feel free to use it. <clears throat> and we have maintained that position and up to today, and, and you may wonder why is the center so well kept. I want to thank the Independence Committee and the City Council for, first of all, they were going to have that ceremony and then for ensuring that we got a paint lift. We really need a paint lift. Thank you very much, City Council. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and you may say to it, why is it so well kept? It's so well kept because there is proper management in the use of the center, and there are rules and regulations that are kept. And this is why it's, it's like that. And it's like that also because people feel a sense of belonging because we do not use it to create any event that will cause division among the people of the country. And it will remain like that. So, so I'm, I'm very pleased to, to be part of this ceremony. I'm very pleased that Romanus' granddaughter is here. Um, it's, 
kind of, they say you can, you, it's very difficult to believe politicians because some of us make ourselves very difficult to believe. But it's out of a genuine appreciation for Romanus' contribution, even though we were on different sides and we fought some pitch battles. But when Romanus left politics and I won the election, we developed a pretty good um, friendship. He, there was a friend of ours called Neville Skeet that even throughout the, 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 the politics, throughout the toughest of times, Romanus and Neville were friends. And when John Compton, then Prime Minister, wanted to send a message for Neville, Romanus brought it. <laughs> so Romanus would call them and say, the Prime, the Prime Minister wants, wants to know that. So John Compton would tell Romanus and tell Romanus, go and tell Neville. And Neville would tell Romanus to tell John Compton. And that happened. And I, and I was always there, so I was somewhere in between all three of them. So I understand that. But Romanus was basically a guy who liked his party. He supported his party. He saw the Labour Party was not the best thing for St. Lucia because he thought some of us were communists. But he liked St. Lucia. He liked the people of, of Castries East. He liked the people of St. Lucia. And he also liked the politics, not the hatred and the venom and the vindictiveness that happens now. Something that got really intense in the last five years. The venom and the vindictiveness and the arrogance got really worse in the last five years. My job is to reverse it. I need to reverse it. And it's not going to be easy to reverse it because people are hurt. And every day, that venom and that hatred, there are things that ought to be very sacred in the politics. There are some boundaries that you should not pass. And these were the boundaries that people like Romanus and Steve and John Compton himself understood that there are certain boundaries. I will say to you that how Rick and Romanus were each other all the time on the people, but Rick was Romanus' good friend and Claudius. You understand? Certain boundaries that we should not pass, but right now the politics is boundless. People wish that you get sick. They wish that you lose your toes. They wish all kind of things about you. I mean, it, it really is, 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 it's, we cannot continue to run a small country with 170,000 people on that basis. We cannot, we should not, we will not. So I want to tell you that this small but symbolic action. It's an action that I'd like to tell the people of St. Lucia that politics hasn't got to be nasty. Politics hasn't got to be about hatred. Politics got to be about letting your ideas contend for the benefit of the country. That's what the politics is all about. And as I always say, my sojourn as Prime Minister is not going to be forever. But I want, when I leave, for me to leave and would have done certain things that people will see that at least he tried to be different. This is what I want to leave in the politics of St. Lucia, a sense of difference. And that difference has got to be in people's mentality. We are too distrustful of each other. Nobody trusts anybody. Nobody believes that you can do something for the benefit of your country. It's always a case of there is no smoke without fire or everybody for themselves. 
it, it really is, 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 a, is, a, is, is an atmosphere that is not conducive for a small country. We are too small for that kind of behavior. We are too small for that kind of behavior. So I want to thank Romanus' family, although most of them are deceased. But tell his granddaughter and his great-grandchildren that he made a contribution to the people of Seleucia. He made a contribution to the people of, of Kashmir's East. And I, being one of his opponents, who was lucky because I think he defeated, he defeated me once and he defeated two or three before me. But from since he, he defeated me, no one else has defeated me. <laughs> so he has a record of being the only politician who has defeated me so far. <laughs> so he has, he has a record for that. So I want to thank his family. I want to thank um, everyone for being out in the Marshall Women's League for sticking on purpose, sticking on, staying on, 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 on message, being a community project, and everyone who made this ceremony a reality, and hopefully we can herald a change in the politics of St. Lucia. I thank you very much.